Hi, I'm John Twist of University Motors. Today I want to talk about the M35G starter. This starter motor was used on the TD, TF, MGAs, and the midgets all the way through. It's a real standard starter. There's two, two styles of starter. One has the brushes come in on the commutator. The later model has them come on the end on the commutator. We're going to be dealing with the earlier style, the M35G instead of the 2M100, I think. Let's take a look at uh, this starter motor here. We can see that it says Lucas up here on top, so we know it's a Lucas unit. It has this circle with the, with the uh, three-pointed the, the three star here as the Lucas symbol. Here it says M35G. The 3.5 three is three and a half inches in diameter. Okay, here we got the part number and those change depending. Here we got the build date of 8, which means August 58. Later they went to the week and year, much, much later, but this is 858. So if you have a MGA that's built August or after 58, then this is proper for your, your car. So we've got a problem with the starter motor and, and uh, we're going to show, show just a little bit about it. First of all, we've got a problem with it with the front bushing. We can see that the armature is loose in the front in the front bearing. So let's go over and uh, put it on the on the in the vise and hook up the battery charger and see what it does. So here we have our battery charger ho hooked up to to this guy. We're going to turn him on. Ooh, way too slow. See that? Oh my gosh, he's only running half speed. So we got some serious problem here. Either one of the one set of brushes is not making contact or judging from the smoke. Let's try that again. Judging from the smoke, we've got some sort of short down in, inside here. You can't smell it, I can. It's a particularly horrid, uh, well, this is the Lucas smoke. I mean, you know, you, you've read about it. You've seen it in bottles, the Lucas smoke, that once you let it out, the, the uh, unit no longer works. So we're going to work on this just a little bit, little bit to take it apart um, and uh, show you what all the individual components are. And if we're lucky, we'll find where the problem lies and get it back together and show you in this video. But if we don't, I want to remind you that next weekend, this is August 8th, 2013. If I'm not mistaken, this is the day that Nixon resigned in 1973. Um, anyway, August 8th, 2013, our MG summer party is one week away, starting on the, on the 16th, next week, Friday. So if you're not registered for our summer party, this is the time to do it. And I got a call from Fayetteville, Arkansas. I'm going to be there, um, I hope you yeah, it's the first weekend in October at their British Car Show in Fayetteville, and that's, um, I want to say it's the 4th and 5th, maybe, of October 2013. You can go on Google and, and look up a British Car Show Fayetteville and come on down. I'll be there. I'd be happy to meet you. So we're going to go uh, take this guy apart. So we got these little springs in here. We pull the springs up and we can pull the brushes out. Sure we can. If I've got long fingernails, which I don't. and. Uh, Maybe I'm going to have to get a pair of pliers to do this. There's one. Here's a ground brush. You can tell it's a ground brush because the uh, wires are not insulated. There's the ground brush. Take a little hook and get pull the spring up and... Oops! Another power brush comes from the field. And lastly, we got this guy here. Now this is an older unit, so this guy has uh, um, British threads in him. Take the nut off here. And uh, 5 16 br British nut here. Actually, it's quarter British, but it uh, takes a 5 16 wrench to fit it because it's oversized, nice big brass nut, pretty. When you're restoring these, you can always polish this brass up. Oh my gosh, it looks absolutely stunning for about a year. And then it uh, fades away, develops a tarnish. So 
So now we got these long screws that hold the whole unit together. Take our screws out, take a look. I just, it's arcing someplace on the inside. Sometimes if it arcs, you'll see what's going on. Here's our armature. And here's the commutator. I'm gonna take a look at the commutator. I don't see that there's anything horribly wrong with that. You know, it looks, it's nice and hot. Should not be this hot. So um, I'm just wondering, I, I cut it on the lathe and I wonder, I wonder if I, if I, if I was able to uh, get all these little segments separated in here. Well, that's, that is absolutely important. The one segment cannot, may not touch the one next to it. So I'm going to clean those, but I'll do that off camera. And here we've got our uh, field coils. So here's our here's our uh, ground ground brushes. This guy's all nice, and I've already cleaned this thing up. I cleaned him up and put him together. And now we look down inside and we see the field coils. And we've got the, our power stud and that goes through two, two field coils and the other end grounds out through the armature and then the other side of the armature goes through with these brushes to, to ground. So we're just taking a look at these to see if we can see anything maybe where one of, the, one of these uh, screws come, come down through here. It's not, it's not unheard of for them to touch here at the bottom to, to touch these little little slivers of uh, aluminum but it doesn't appear as though that's happening. I think what may be the problem I think we may have some some uh, continuity from commutator segment to commutator segment. So we're gonna go off camera for a minute and I'm gonna clean this up and then we'll come back. So I've tried to clean the clean the uh, the commutator here I don't know if I've done a good enough job so we're gonna put it on the growler here this is a Snap-on MT-326A growler. We turn our growler on. Ooh, listen to that. Okay, that the fact that, we, that this is magnetic up here means that there's something shorted. This is okay right here. There's no magnetism here. But we got magnetism here again, and here, not here, here real bad. So there's still something wrong with the commutator segments, and there, there's some shorting going on. So I'm going to have to I'm going to have to clean this up even a little bit more. So I've just cleaned this up on the lathe a little bit better here in the corners because I'm, I think that what's going on is that these segments are touching each other. So here's the, here's the proof. Let's find out. Good here. Good here. Good here. It's good. It's good. This is looking good. I don't see any problems here at all. There's no magnetism induced here for whatever reason. And uh, so apparently I was right about uh, these things. So we're going to quick put this thing back together and try them again. Right, here we go. We're just going to put this back to, together. There are alignment pegs on here to get it all in, in the right place. Get our uh, hole here and get our brush through here and try to get this guy into here without getting anything really buggered up or really shorted here. The rule, the shop rule is don't rebuild don't rebuild most starters because most starters don't want to be rebuilt. They fight with you and uh, you really want to send them to somebody who has all the all the knowledge and experience and they've done them a lot of the a lot but on the other hand if you're careful take your time and time is the is the biggest issue here because we run at a hundred dollars an hour and and uh, so if it takes an hour to take this thing apart and put some bushings in it and and uh, clean the commutator and you know make it look pretty and everything well hey then that's a that's a fair deal um, but if it takes three or four hours oh my gosh I mean that's that's uh, we're way beyond the pale but 
let me caution everyone who's watching about buying about buying uh, rebuilt units through uh, some some major uh, distribution houses. I don't know where these things are rebuilt, but we get them in here, and, and you might as well not have done anything to them. Now, the nice thing when you buy them from an independent or from a rebuilder is, of course, they are guaranteed, and they are guaranteed. There's no problem. Everybody will take them back. You know, there's very often a sign that says no return on electrical components, but you buy a starter and you take it back and they've been having trouble with the starter motors, they know they've been having trouble, um, then they aren't going to argue with you. It's just a, just a hassle of doing it. Here in the shop, if we buy a rebuilt starter motor and it doesn't work, and then I have to pay my mechanic to do the job again. In the best of circumstances, when we do a job, the customer pays for it. But the customer rarely pays for us to do something twice, even though it's not our fault. So here we go, we're gonna get these brushes in. We're gonna be done here in just a moment. And we'll go back over and test it. While I'm doing this, I remind you again about the summer party coming up. And uh, remember, this is 2013, so if you're watching this in 2015, Make sure you go check your calendar and uh, make sure what, what's going on. It is August, it's a beautiful August. Um, the temperatures have been absolutely stunningly wonderful. We, ha we never have had, nor will we have, a plan R for the summer party, that is a rain plan. You know, only once did it rain. And it rained so much. It rained so much in 1985 so much that we're still enjoying good weather because of that, all that rain. Here we go. Hook this guy up. It doesn't matter. It's field wound, so it doesn't matter if it's hooked up positive or negative earth. Uh, I'm drawing about 40 amps. You can see the Bendix kickback. Sure you can. Now I better pop my uh, pop my fuse. Forty amps is a lot of amps to draw here. So the Bendix does kick back. It sure looks like it's working great. I'll just pop my fuse again. I got too much going on the same circuit. But that's it. That's the test. To test it, um, you don't want to be making or breaking a contact here. Like if you got a jumper cable off off a battery, don't keep touching it here because you'll burn burn the end of here. Keep touching it here, for instance. So anyway, this this guy's all all set. And that's a quick rebuild. I didn't show you how about taking the Bendix apart. That'll be another video. Um, but uh, this guy seems to be okay. The front bushing isn't any good, but but uh, just for a fast re rebuild, it, it will work and it will start the car. So we'll see you at the summer party. Don't forget.